Welcome back to another episode of Inspired Content, where we're in a week of five uh, episodes of reading short stories. One each from Isaac's Universe and A Book of Wizards. And today's two stories are... The Myrix by Robert Sheckley and The Life My Life as a Swan by Tanith Lee. So those are the two stories I'll be reading today and uh, afterwards I'll give my thoughts and feelings and then uh, list off some inspirations I got from them. So I'll see you on the other side of that. Alright, so we've read these two stories, starting with, not even sure how to pronounce this one, but it's Myrix, M-Y-R-Y-X, by Robert Sheckley, that's out of uh, Isaac's universe, I'm, I'm going to say, give this a 4.8 out of a 5.4, it's actually a pretty decent story, and there's actually some other things to mine from this, but I can only pick six, so let's get into those quickly. In a fantasy setting, having an ancient civilization, Atlantis or something like that, leave behind a, um, a training ground for its, you know, sages and more powerful characters, um, and the civilization is now long gone, and the villages and kingdoms that encounter this place see it as a, a potential place to discover great and powerful things, but they quickly discover that those who venture into this realm can either be turned into monsters or become empowered with mystical abilities. And it's not sure which will happen, and so it's both a place where monsters come from and a place where the powerful and enchanted, enchanted beings come from. And uh, it's sort of like a Russian roulette, what you choose to do in there. An alien amusement park that's tailored for a decidedly non-humanoid alien and the amusements are kind of terrifying and dangerous but they're also potentially amazing technology to try to learn from and pilfer so it's it's tempting to go in there and seek things out but it's also incredibly dangerous whereas for the original civilization that created it it would have been an interesting fun distraction for the afternoon Devices built to serve the command of a long-dead alien race, but because of the different ways of thinking and different brain structures, the devices act sort of like the old classic role-playing game joke of, a genie grants you a wish, but no matter what you wish for, you're not going to get what you want. It's always going to be twisted and corrupted in some way. A holodeck-like device built to respond to the thoughts of the alien race that created it. But because our brains are different, it creates a twisted and out-of-context vision world that's sort of like a dreamscape. It's walking through your own subconscious and dreams. A smart habitat that wants its owner back, despite the fact that its owner and its civilization have long since died out, it wants it back so badly that anyone who ventures into it, it tries to make into their old masters, and alters them and 
twists them and makes them into something they aren't. A weird alien city that you come to and you land on the planet after crossing vast stretches of space and you try to work your way towards the center of the city to uncover the secrets that it holds and when you get there you discover it seems to be some kind of central computer and as you start to work your way into the central computer the outside world just starts to flicker and disappear and it suddenly dawns on you to realize that this is an artificial reality created by a device and the whole world you know isn't real the whole universe that you came across to see this world isn't real and you're a creation of this artificial environment too. You're a hologram. You're something false. The story of uh, my life as a swan, I believe is the name of it. I, I really didn't care for this story. It's not even that the story is dark, twisted, and sort of like it hates its main character and tortures it. Um, it's the narrative style is sort of like somebody reading off a list of journal entries like today this and you know th that was the day I went to the market and bought cabbages and yet it's all these events that happen that you know there are sections where there is a sense of story and development and I mean it's I'd give it a 3.2 out of a 6.7 I just didn't care for the story um, but some of the ideas I can take from it there's an old uh, story that I remember reading when I was younger about a knight who found a maiden and they married and one of the conditions was that she never tried to find out who he really is and people so doubt in her mind and she tries to stay loyal but eventually she has to question who he is and when, he, when she does he reveals that he is a, a swan knight of some kind and uh, then he has to leave her and she's left behind with nothing nothing left anymore and so I had this sense of you know maybe this swan knight this mystical swan who becomes a holy pure um, knight for a kingdom um, after he's left he doesn't know when he left that his wife was pregnant and so the child of this this night would be somebody not quite human and slightly different and telling that story would be an interesting story. An outcast who is haunted in the woods on the edge of a town and desperately wants to go into the town and find shelter from the haunting. Um, but the town always treats them poorly. And in the end of the story, it's a matter of the character being sheltered from the town by the haunting entities and the, the spirits in the woods. Raising swans that mimic their parent, in this case, in the story, it's uh, she finds an abandoned nest or a nest where the parents are dead and she hatches the eggs and they think of her as raising them and they learn from mimicking what she does. Um, taking that concept further, one of the things she says is they learn what to do by doing what she does but since she can shift back into human form they may, the, the swans, the swan children may not know that they shouldn't be able to do that and so using animal spirit energy or something maybe they do assume a human form and it's the the story of trying to adapt and understand how to become human at that point because they don't know how to relate to that kind of thing. There's a section of this story where they talk about somebody who creates an army or a troop of soldiers made out of crows. And the idea of this seems kind of interesting, but I want to take it a step further and afterwards when they become crows again, the feathers that are, you know, dropped or left behind each one of them is enchanted to become a part of an army's arsenal. 
the, the boots or the armor or the shield or the helmet or the sh swords or knives or bows. All of these things, you, know, you take a feather and you, you tap into the magic that was briefly a part of it and turn it back into something you can use. A prince or princess born from an egg laid by a queen who was once a swan for a time, or even originally was a swan to start with and became a princess. Ah, this one is a little twisted. The idea of a a wizard or a witch or some magic user who lives out in the woods who is trapping animals and converting them into servants trying to make people out of these animals but he's always just he or she is always getting it just a little bit wrong and so they they're angry and kind of cruel to the animals who are look mostly human but have signals that most human like the white hair of the swan woman in this story or some other feature that's just not quite right. They've gotten it just wrong and they resent their failures in doing this. So they take it out on these animals and these animals are living as as humanly as they can and yet still part animal and some of them might escape or the wizard get, magic user gets into a duel and dies and they're left to fend for themselves but just that being that animal in the form of a human storyline is worth exploring I think so these are some of the ideas I got from these two stories I hope there's some kind of inspiration in there for you um, I'm going to come back and do a, another set tomorrow see you then